In this recording, we will go over the principles of a nutrition in-service, or essentially training your chef, your manager, your nurse's aide, or anyone else in relationship to the health or nutrition information that you have. Essentially, nutrition or health education is really boils down to an, an instructional me method that promotes healthful behaviors. So the goal is to impart information that individuals can use to make informed decisions about food, dietary habits, or in general health. So you're either training the lay person or in some cases you're training the trainer or somebody that will or should be a subject matter expert. There are a lot of different potential scenarios for education. Perhaps you can pause here and think of all the different potential scenarios. There's scenarios such as like trying to get kids to be excited about health or nutrition in the hospital, training bedside in the hospital, perhaps learning more in a classroom setting or in a kitchen setting, training kids, adults, and nurses or nurses aides, doctors, even community health settings, all are potential scenarios for education. You might teach groups, you might teach individuals, and you could be teaching online. But all of these potential scenarios are actually being shown in more development kind, management kind of situations and scenarios. Things like how to train the manager, soft skills, people skills, team building, customer service, bedside manners. All of these things can be rolled up into an overall in-service topic or series. Nutrition education efforts can incorporate strategies to change environments in which people are making health decisions. You may be a fitness trainer and be doing one-on-one -on -one training with a client. In this case, you have some situations where people are trying to change their health or making new health decisions. There are three types of intervention. These include building awareness, changing lifestyles, and then creating a supportive environment. In the case of building awareness, you might be doing an in-service that just gives the basic awareness about something in specific. So you might be teaching uh, cooks about sodium or building awareness around pick lines to how to manage pick lines for nurses. Changing lifestyles might be incorporating more fruits and vegetables in the school nutrition lunch program or trying to incorporate more outdoor activity, right? Changing lifestyles could also be increasing your physical activity for a fitness uh, trainer. Creating a supportive environment means that managers can be supportive to their team. So increasing that training, increasing that education, and being able to train subject matter experts so they can continue that training both day in and day out or weekly or even monthly. Effective nutrition programs include the following. Good instructional design and learning principles. That means they are approachable and <clears throat> have an overall outline to follow the basic learning principles. They use media to facilitate high degree of individualization. They the target changes in knowledge based on both the topic and the demographic. You're really working to understand what level of health literacy of the audience. A fitness trainer is going to probably talk very differently to a, a workout client that has a medical degree versus a workout client that might be um, a truck driver, for example. They have a very different health literacy. But overall, you're working to change the motivation and the overall attitudes of the audience. Adult learners learn best when their subject matter is tied directly to their own experience. You want to really create that authenticity. 
That's the material that has direct application to the learner's own reality, to their own life. If you can create that authenticity, guaranteed you're going to create learning moments that will stay with the adult learners for a long time. And perhaps they'll be able to, in turn, train or educate others. For adults, learning is a very intentional, purposeful activity. So you really want to engage that purpose with the adults and encourage it to go beyond just that learning moment. So it, the in-service might be 30 minutes, but you want to try to find ways to keep that learning moment going beyond that actual in-service. There are key principles of adult education. The overall roles and responsibilities or any previous learning experiences can really influence the learning in that particular in-service. You have to keep in mind adult learning is constantly happening. So whether it's in a formal in-service or training or more of a bedside or in the moment kind of training, that adult is constantly looking to learn. So you're really wanting to engage the continuous learning process. Perhaps there's something that you can give in the moment, in the, in the 15 or 30 minute um, in service, but then how do you take those moments so that they're learning as they go back out into their lives and into the field? Let's explore some best learning practices for adults. Keep in mind that people have, at any age, learn best if they already have some prerequisite knowledge, if content is broken into small pieces, if what they learned is practiced and reinforced again. So not just saying big content driven information and just leaving it, maybe going back to it a couple of times. So the content seems relevant to particular topics that they are of interest and so that they can review it a number of ways to really full uh, feel that they've grasped the information. So putting it into practice, you might have them discuss their own personal knowledge on the topic. Maybe that's something you can start with. You want to break down content into, into chunks. For example, if you're talking about wound care, you might do various stages of wounds, best nutrition for wounds, and then meal ideas for wounds. So break it down and create an outline so that the learner can really understand and grasp key pieces. Finally, you want to reinforce with a knowledge check. So ending with a knowledge check really helps reinforce that information again at the end. Further recommendations include making learn, learning um, problem-centered and meaningful to the learner's life situations. So you might want to bring specific real-life examples. Make information concrete. So define any abstract terms. If you're introducing any new terms to the audience, you want to organize them and define them. Make learning collaboration between the educator and the learner. Perhaps include hands-on examples and come prepared for examples so that you have a few in your back pocket or your toolkit so you're prepared to introduce those examples to the learner. And encourage participatory approaches to learning. For example, have learners come up with ideas with nutrients or ideas with wounds. And so they can really ap apply it to their own basic information. Seize any teachable moments. If someone has a story, you want to let them discuss it and maybe teach to it. Use that as an example. Increase the adult learner's sense of self-worth by validating their experiences. So be positive by offering positive feedback in that moment. You're establishing a positive learning environment by not just glossing over any questions or comments. And if somebody really gets in what we want to call deep in the weeds, you can say, you know what, let's talk about that at the end. Maybe you, can I, you and I can explore that a little further. So address their questions and comments, don't gloss over them, and perhaps offer some alternatives to further questions. Recognize individual and cultural differences in the group because they can really affect learning styles. So if somebody is in a kitchen and you're doing food demonstrations, they all might approach different herbs and spices differently. They might approach how uh, cooking 
utensils and cooking equipment is, is used. So really appreciate the, the individual and cultural differences and perhaps somebody might want to share some new stories. It's really important to have a new, an education plan when designing a nutrition or health in service. What exactly is a, an education plan? It's some kind of written document identifying the outline for, for the overall in-service. You're identifying who the target audience is, what their needs are, and what are the primary messages you want to have them walk away with. What are the goals and objectives for the learning? How do you plan on executing? And finally, how will you evaluate effectiveness? If you know your target audience, you will know how they're motivated to learn. So co conduct some research prior to you developing your plan so you understand the learner. And you want to center that lesson plan on the learner's interests, needs, and their motiva motivation. Relate it to real life situations. If we had a specific topic on fruits and vegetable intake, for example, we want to talk about how to increase the fruit and vegetable intake on the day-to-day -day and weekly basis for your learners. When you talk about increasing the fruit and vegetable intake to, let's say, fourth graders, it's going to be very different than if you were talking to teenagers, adults, and elderly. So you really want to understand the learner and how you can motivate them to learn further and get excited about your topic. Identify those key nutrition messages. In this case, we're talking about nutrition, but it could also be health-driven as well. Write very specific and instructional objectives. Understand, what is the end product or end knowledge that you want to be achieved? In the example of the fruits and vegetables, the end knowledge is how the learner can increase intake of fruits and vegetables in their week. So that's the specific objective. As such, you want to identify any major concepts that need to be communicated. Keep in mind, sometimes you can have too many and sometimes you can have too not enough. So a good way of thinking about it is SWBAT. What are student, students will be able to, at the end of this instruction, what will they be able to learn to perform? What will they be able to apply in their day-to-day -day life? How will they be able to address the key objectives out of the in-service? You want to take that SWBAT and identify the specific topics, activities, and methods in order to convey those objectives. It's important to structure your knowledge, and this is the bulk of the plan. How are you going to develop those objectives to apply? So again, if we're using the fruit and vegetable example for fourth graders, we will know the SWBAT is that they want to increase their fruits and vegetables by, let's say, three per week. Now that seems low, but maybe we're, we're basing out on a, on a very low um, entry point as it is. So knowing the demographic is really important and then identifying those clear goals. How can they increase their fruits and vegetables through the week? What are specific methods they can do that? And how can you address those methods within the in-service? So perhaps you will spend 10 minutes having them peel different fruits and vegetables or taste new fruits and vegetables. Maybe they'll play a game where they're tossing the apple or talking about farming. There's lots of different activities or methods that you can use to convey that those specific objectives. Finally, you want to evaluate the overall effectiveness of the in-service. Knowing what evaluation methods you will use is really important. You want to have observable learning assessments to determine if those objectives were met. So what tools might you use to identify if those kids grasp the methods of learning about fruits and vegetables. You might ask them to identify, come up with at least three new fruits and vegetables that they'll have next week.
You might ask them to talk about all the different colors of fruits and vegetables. You just really want to understand the effectiveness of the overall training. When you have a, write a specific lesson plan, there are specific components. Things like the lesson title. You want to ha make sure it's grabbing and, and can be approachable to the different demographic. How long is it going to be? What is your warm-up plan? I.e., how are you going to warm up the audience? Make them feel comfortable. What are specific procedures to use to meet goals? What are the learning activities you're going to use? Are there materials needed if you're going to have the kids be tossing fruits and uh, fruits and vegetable balls, you're going to need those balls. If you're going to have them peeling and tasting different fruits and vegetables, you're going to need that equipment. And also, you're also going to need to know who does what and what the cool down and wrap up, including the evaluation. Finally, spend a little bit of time on rehearsal. You want to make sure your time estimates of different topics are right. You want to understand how activities work through. If they're if the kids are getting so focused on tossing the rubber apple, and you might get off topic and lose a lot of time. So understand how those activities work through. You also want to check your media. Does it work? For example, this is a GIF. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it does. You want to make sure it works before you even put anything into practice. And finally, you want to be very comfortable with your delivery because you are the subject matter expert. This concludes the recording on nutrition and health in service.